so welcome to Dark House Review. This is our first video. I'm Jeremy and this is Eric. And today's video is going to be about my personal top 10 horror videos. With honorable mention. With some honorable mentionings, yes, yes. Next video is going to be Eric's because what we did was I told Eric what my list was and he went and watched them so he can know where I'm coming from, form his own opinions, and we can talk about that. And then the next video is going to be Eric's videos, and I'm going to watch all his and do the same thing. because yeah, even though we both like horror, at the same time we have two different opinions on horror movies. And so a lot of his movies are, you know, some of them are in the 90s, but a lot of mine are 2000s. Yeah. So. And I tend to like the more um, <coughs> ghost or possession or movies that get inside your head and kind of fuck with you whereas Eric I like more of a slasher I guess you would call it also blood and gore I can I can watch probably a little more easy than he can but yeah. I'm more about I don't killers like, I don't like uh, torture porn <laughs> torture I can't get into torture porn saw I have never heard the, <laughs> never heard the word torture <laughs> porn before um, so what we're going to do is go from number 10 to number 1 and then our honorable mentionings. Um, I guess the first one I'm going to start off with is Lord of Illusions. Great movie. Um, what did you think of Lord of Illusions? Lord of Illusions. Lord of Illusions, first of all, I didn't understand the title. It, I, I did understand the title after watching the movie. Uh, but when I was younger, my parents told me, let's watch Lord of Illusions. Uh, and it ended up being a horror movie when I thought it was going to be a magic movie. Right? <laughs> so I, I watched mean, it. Kinda it kind of is. It kind of is. Because it starts it is. off with, you know, Swan yeah. being a magician and doing shit. Yeah, it and controlling is a, blades with his mind. This so. is probably the creepiest magic movie in that case. Like, yeah. it's, it's definitely a movie that. It has what I would call spiritual spiritual advice, but also very selfish spiritual advice. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a movie that kind of is one person showing people what he calls the way or their way to salvation, but really he was not made for that. He was made for the destruction of man. Yeah. And that's pretty much what it was. I liked this movie when I saw it as a kid because it stuck with me like there's certain scenes that just stuck with me certain things that were said that over the years even though the movie's kind of well it is dated when you watch it now but it just kind of stuck with me and that's kind of why I put it on my list is the fact that it's just stuck with me over the years and certain scenes just haunted me from it yeah when when I was younger the only scene that as of right now I could really remember was when Swan's face like melted off or yeah. like ripped off I, that was the only thing as a kid that I remembered. Like, I thought that was creepy. And when I was a kid, it was also, the creepy things were also really cool. Yeah. So. Butterfield, believe it or not, is what stuck with me from the movie. Um, not so much Swan or the other guy, but just the weirdness of Butterfield and how, I mean, he really looks like a guy from the 90s. Yeah. So it fits the date of the movie. It was 95? Yeah, 95. That's when this was made. But he looks like he should be leading, like, a 90s alternative band or something with the way he looks. But just the creepiness of him, the way he moves and everything, just kind of stuck with me and yeah. uh, weirded me out. And then as I got older, I started thinking, wow, he looks like the guy from Pink Floyd in the movie, The Wall. Hmm. So, but yeah, that's why I put this one as my number 10, because it just stuck with me. Yeah. Um, my next one is Skeleton Key. My number 9 is Skeleton Key. What do you think of Skeleton Key? First time I watched it, I hated it. Yeah? Absolutely hated it. It put me to sleep. Uh, and I just... I didn't give it really another chance until... Well, the last time I gave it another chance was about two years ago. Maybe two years ago. And uh, I enjoyed it a little bit more. And then I watched it yesterday. And... The story was better... But as, like, the first time I watched it, I wasn't into, scare like, stories. I yeah. was into brutality. 
right, <laughs> right. Torture I was, porn. Yeah, I was that <laughs> I was that young dude that was just like, I want to see some blood. Yeah. So, I didn't really like it at first, but I think uh, I would actually find it as a different type of ghost story. Yeah. Which um, makes a good story. I liked it. I, I I was really debating on this or The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Mm. It, it was really a tie because the thing that made me like both these stories is you have this character that does not believe anything of what she's being told. Yeah. Um, it's just like your modern day person who doesn't believe in that bullshit. You got mm -hmm. internet, you got technology, and it's kind of deterred some people from old ways, you know, that life used to be like. And I like how over the time of the movie, mm -hmm. she starts getting more convinced. Yeah. And more convinced. And then eventually, at the very end, the bad guy wins. Yeah. I, I think it shows a perfect uh, look to your opinions and even your belief system over time can be evolved into something yes. else. Something that you once didn't believe in, you can end up believing in. Uh, yeah, and it shows that perfectly. And it also could do the whole... from a kind of a psychological perspective, when you're in an environment, eventually you can be convinced of things. Mm -hmm. Because you don't really have anything from the outside reminding you of what you used to think like. Yeah, and in that situation, it's kind of like... I guess I would call it isolated proof. Yeah. And you're just like, you can't help but think anything other than this must be real. Right. So, yeah. yeah. Um, this movie actually had me uncomfortable throughout it. Like, the mirrors, and as mm -hmm. she started researching more into the lady and trying to help the guy that was starting to snap out of it, you know, but then yeah. the lady came back in and fixed shit, and the brick dust. I mean, it had me so wound up that I was actually considering buying brick dust and putting it in <laughs> along my windows and stuff. You know, or salt. Salt or does salt, that too. Yeah. But it's a, it's a good movie of showing how the girl, not only, at first she was so dead set and not believing in this stuff, uh, and then more and more she, from being so sure that it's not real, she became obsessed. Yeah. So at, at the same time, she doesn't believe it, but well, she's so her, obsessed with it, it makes her, her kind of her believe. Her current it. view paradigm was clashing with these other people's paradigms that she was surrounded by. Yeah, I mean, you and had. So a, she's fighting it. She yeah, doesn't want to perfect, believe it. You had a perfect her collision. reality didn't fit that before. You had a perfect collision of someone not believing something, and then the proof basically colliding yeah. with her disbelief. You know, over time, it's, it's going to be altered, and you're going to start. Needing to know more, I and, understand. Yeah, and you end up over obsessed. It's almost like a survival thing, and in, in like in this case, where she had to understand, so she can try to beat it and survive it. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. It's kind of uh, beat the clock. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, she didn't get there quick enough. <laughs> a minute to win it. <laughs> she was short by a second. Number eight. Tale of Two Sisters. Um, American version is the Uninvited. With, with my opinion, uh, both equally good. I, I did like both. A Tale of Two Sisters <clears throat> would be on higher than Uninvited, but the Uninvited also entertained me. What did you think about the Tale of Two Sisters ending versus the Uninvited ending? Tale of Two Sisters ending, um, to me, more better defined yeah. of an ending. Uninvited, I would say, stopped at a weird place where there was really a lot of questions unanswered. Well, I think that's a perfect uh, movie in where there are different things happening at the same time. Yeah. But it all ends up being put together at the end. So I was not disappointed with that. But at the same time, there's still a good amount of mystery at the end. Yes. That makes you makes your imagination like, go Like, for farther. example, the wife of the... I think he's a cousin or something. In this Tale of Two Sisters version, she has a seizure, and she sees something underneath the sink, and she says that she saw a little girl under the sink. So that kind of tells you that this girl is hallucinating everything. Mm -hmm. Some of it is actual 
paranormal phenomenon going on in the house while this girl is kind of unraveling yeah. at the same time. So, that, to me, that kind of plays with her hallucinations. Yeah. So, is it really her mental instability, or is this paranormal thing helping make a mental instability in her? Yeah. Uh, so, is it because of a ghost that mentally she's hallucinating things? Or is it just her her mental illness along with it yeah. just happens to be paranormal activity? I, I really recommend that if anyone watches this, they watch it the first time and just absorb it. Take in as much as you can, try to figure it out, and good luck figuring it out. If you can figure it out the first time viewing it, you're fucking awesome. Uh, I did not know it was going to happen. And even when I did start figuring it out, I didn't expect the other stuff as well that followed. Yeah. With the uninvited, since I'd already seen this movie, um, I knew exactly yeah, what was going to happen. Not fair. That, that was very. <laughs> that, well, they didn't even take it to the multiple levels. It was just that one level yeah. that they took it to. And, like, technically, that's a foreign film. Tale right. Of Two Sisters. It's, it's an Asian uh, extreme movie. Yeah. So, what is happening is, I think over time, the American people. Have n they don't want movies that are basically story against story against story, mm -hmm. all in one movie, and then basically all of it comes together because for American people that seems confusing. Well, that's perfect amount amount of chaos. Yeah. That kind of we weeds out the people who are actually paying attention and who are. Yeah. If you're not really paying attention, at the end of the movie you're gonna have very gonna little to no movie. idea. You're gonna look at it and think. What the fuck just happened? What did I just watch? Yeah, and then I'm not going to watch that. I'm not going to tell anybody about watching it. Right. This is definitely a movie I think a person needs to watch twice. First time to take it in, second time to see what the fuck just happened. Yeah. And was it really... Was there any subtle hints throughout it? With The Uninvited, I had to watch it once. And I pretty much had a good understanding. Yeah. With that, I was kind of lost the first time. Well, it's just trippy. Like, if you watch it the second time... Watch how the father interacts. Mm. That's what I loved about it. Yeah. And it's so. kind of like the Fight Club. It's, it was always there. It's just you didn't see it. Yeah. Oh, so. that, that also goes with, you know, the sixth sense. Yeah. It, it was, was always it there. It was in front of your face the entire, entire time. time. The main character. <laughs> now, my seventh movie is a short. And it, it's kind of, I was debating on if I should count it as, you know, my top ten, or if I should just honorable mention it, yeah. but I love this, the short. It, it really, really stuck with me. The projector scene is always going to stick with me for the rest of my life. And the movie is John Carpenter's Cigarette Burns from the Master of Horror series. Yeah, it's actually uh, season one, episode eight. Is it season eight? Or episode one? Yeah. I can't season talk. one. <laughs> yeah, season one, episode eight. There you go. Um, but one of the things that John Carpenter said when I was listening to the commentary was he said he didn't think he really portrays what a cigarette burn is. Even though I got it. But then he made a point, and I was like, okay, you're right. Um, he said, I think Fight Club made a better... <laughs> okay. Idea of what a cigarette burn is. <laughs> so I had seen Fight Club already, <coughs> yeah. so I had already known. And uh, for anybody that are Jar John Carpenter fans that are watching this, if you do watch this, this is not a typical like, John. Yeah, Carpenter this is not film. John Carpenter that you know of Halloween. Yes. Yeah. Or the Thing, or the Fog, yeah. or like Big Trouble, Little Child. Compared to the Thing, <laughs> the quality is probably better in this movie but it's, yeah. it's still pretty cheesy but uh yeah it's a lot more of a gruesome movie for John Carpenter to make but it's it's definitely a cool movie and I love John Carpenter to begin with because like I said I like slasher movies mm -hmm. so that was something definitely different and uh god the projector scene good. though and then when the dude I don't, again, don't want to give away too much, but when he goes and tries to find, you know, when he's recommended that one guy to go to and talk to, and then the guy, like, he wakes up and he's taped down and everything, and he has to watch the guy, like, take care of the girl. 
Ugh. And I was just like, Hall! Oh, blood squirt up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you made it sound like it was like a water fountain. It was kind of. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> but um, not like Asian movie kind of like squirting, oh, you know, waterfall thing out the side of the neck. <laughs> waterfall. Like a, a elephant just put fake blood in its trunk and just... <laughs> Spit it out. Like, yeah. Well, it's what they do in a lot of them. It's like they hit and then there's this pause and all of a sudden... <laughs> There's a pause because you have to you have to make sure that the blood actually comes out right. because sometimes it takes a while for blood to actually come out of the body in now such I, a quantity. It's like holding up. It's like all right, hold on, guys, hold on. All right, now no. I was watching Split screen everywhere. Now with this movie, it's not not no, as much blood as that. It's definitely not that's that for much. Sure, but. but I do like how in this um, you're taking on the ride along with the main character who's trying to find the movie. Yeah. You don't really know what's going on. You're just fed bits and pieces, just like the lead character. And when finally the ending happens, you're like, whoa. Mm. I was not expecting that. And because of it, I was not expecting that. It, it had to be put on the list. Yeah, it's wonderful. It's, it's another one that's just stuck with me. If you like John Carpenter, you'll like John Carpenter more. Yeah, you really will. Sure. One thing I do want to say is I don't even know if I'm going to say his name right Udo Kirir. Uh, is his name German actor in a lot of horror movies playing like really random off type characters yeah he's in this and his character he's the guy feeding the intestines okay. into the uh, okay. projector yeah like it just stuck it stuck oh, he, he, he played the part really well and when he's like mocking the angel and stuff you're just kind of like he, you're dick yeah he's a you really he don't just care naturally, at all. He naturally looks demented. Yeah. Like, it's his eyes. Just something about his, his eyes. His eyes are piercing. Yeah. Like, if he was to look at you, your soul probably would be gone. Right. It would leave you. Pretty creepy. But, yeah, I definitely enjoyed um, Cigarette Burns. Yeah. And I've watched many of the horror series, Masters of Horror, mm -hmm. and that one really stuck out with me. Number six is a part of a huge collection um, this movie again had an amazing reveal. Uh, this movie has inspired a lot of people who have seen it. Um, Rob Zombie, yes. um, the synthesizer person from Atari Teenage Riot was absolutely obsessed with this movie. <laughs> um, just an amazing movie, and, and for its time. It was made in 1962. The storytelling's really good. Yeah. Um, I will say, I, I know that you like the remake. I I cannot get into the remake as much. Mm -hmm. um, I own it. It's it's in my collection. Somewhere. Somewhere over there. But um, the movie I'm talking about is Carnival of Souls. It's just one of those movies that... It's, it's telling you a storyline, and, and you're just as confused as the main character of what's going on, and then you find out what's really going on, you're like, oh shit, I never saw that coming. Yeah. Well, the remake, the only thing that, what you just said, the remake has definitely more of a def defined story. Yeah. That you kind of have a better understanding. Than. Yeah. But I... I will say that the um, head phantom, ghost, whatever he is, mm -hmm. in the remake looked creepier. Yeah. Well, that's... By far creepier. That's what you're always going to get with remakes. Like, the remake yeah. of it, I'm sure Pennywise is going to look scarier. Yeah. That's just how it is. Uh, more and more, especially if you like horror, every time you watch a movie, you're like, dude, that was creepy. But then years from now, you're going to look back on that that's and cheesy. say, that was cheesy. Yeah. I mean, so. we look at cigarette burns. It's a short, so they didn't have much of a budget to work with. Right. Uh, and then Carnival Souls, you know. It's old. It's old. So It's just... But it's, it's, you know, the same era as stuff like the wonderful classic Psycho. Yeah. And if you, you've seen Psycho, then you understand that, you know, black and white is pretty much where it's at when it comes to classic horror movies. Right. And, uh, you know, usually it's off limits to try to redo that. Carnival of Souls, uh, to me, personally, was a good remake. I, I will say that the best one is the original. 
I've always believed the original was the best. So number five. 1999 Stigmata. Is it 99? Yeah. You're right. Yeah. No, it's 2000 back here. Oh, 2000. Okay. But it does say 99 right there. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah, Stigmata. Which I think for, if, you know, we'll say late 90s. Yeah. Early 2000s. We'll try to put it in that category. I think it was... The quality was great. Yes. And the story was great. Yes. And if you have uh, kind of an interest in two things, either the Catholic Church, cool movie for you. Yes. Or an interest in what I call parapsychology, weird phenomenons that happen in the body. Yep. Great movie for you. Or ghosts or possessions. Yeah. All three, all four, actually. Really, everything that makes up horror. If you like it, watch this. Watch this movie. <laughs> um, I have watched this movie repeatedly. That's why it's in my top five. I just, no matter how many times I watch it, I do not get bored with it. I'm always still interested in what's going on. Yeah. Um, I, I love the idea that... Just by some random chance, an atheist girl ends up being possessed by a very passionate priest that had every stigmata. Yeah. Did he have every, or was it minus one? I think it was every. Okay. Whoa. Mm. You would think as many times as I've seen it, I'd remember that. I actually don't believe. I don't believe he has every. I think the head's missing. The. Okay, yeah. Yep. I think it is one short, but yeah. he was the most, or whatever. Yeah. Amazing, amazing movie. Especially the scene when, like, she's on the car scraping with the bottle, this ancient text, and, yeah. uh, I... or she's hanging there in midair, and all of a sudden she starts dripping blood because she's yeah. getting yet another stigmata, the one that could possibly kill her, because she has so many going. Yeah, I actually believe that this movie, her, what would you call it, I guess body contortions, Yeah. like the way that her body just naturally is in this movie alone is creepy just the way she can make her body look yes creepy and then even when they're looking at the photos and then they see the reflection of the old man in the mirror yeah i just this movie just in general is just an amazing movie love yeah. this movie it started must see it is a must see it is a must see i will say that the people who play in this movie um actually all three of those people uh, Stigmata is Patricia the reason. Arquette, Gabriel Bryan, and Jonathan Price. Yeah. They are... This movie is the reason that they have gotten other big roles. Is because of this movie. Um, if you go on Google, look up Best 50 Horror Movies, Stigmata's on there. Really? Yeah. Like, uh, a lot of people love that. New York Times says Stigmata is one of the best horror movies. And I, I would actually agree with that. I, I think it's a great movie, um, but I also do like movies that involve some kind of organized religion. Number four. Oh, Let man. me tell you about a time when I almost died. One of the best intros to a movie I've seen, one of the best exits to a movie I've seen. The whole flow of this movie just sucked me in and really weird, like creeped me out. And yeah. It's one of those movies where he should stop researching what he's researching, but he just can't because he's just that curious. And he knows that every person that ever researched it pretty much had their life destroyed. Mm -hmm. And the movie is Fallen. With Denzel Washington. Washington. Which, John Goodman. man, I, I love Denzel Washington. I think he's a good actor. Yeah. And, uh... Yeah, you brought this movie up to me. I've never heard of it. And I was like, are you telling me Denzel Washington did a horror movie? Yep. And uh, I would consider it something called subtle horror. Uh, it's not like in-your-face oh, horror. Oh, definitely not. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a great story told by Denzel Washington. No better, no better man. Uh, yeah. I, I love how it changed my uh, view of the song Time by oh, Rolling Stones. Yeah. This movie has told me that there really is very little Denzel Washington can't do when it comes to acting parts. Uh, I was automatically sucked in with mm -hmm. the beginning of the movie. And uh, really the whole movie, it did not 
I did not get bored with it. I didn't get tired of watching it. Didn't even look down at my phone. I was watching it. And uh, I like how the beginning comes back around at the end. Yes. And uh, that makes up a good movie. I like that. Yeah. It, it, this is one of the few movies where I remember the first part of the movie. Like, the first, one of the first lines. Yeah. Let me tell you about when I almost died. Dude, you can't forget that. What are you doing? And then when he wraps it up in the end, it just makes me laugh. The next one, I think, is a perfect follow-up for the one. Um, and I have the director's cut. Yeah. The one that has all the nice little scenes. Crab stair scene and peeing scene and all that. Um, so my number three is The Exorcist. If you don't know this movie... Shoot yourself. You <laughs> might not be a horror fan. Right. This is the possession movie. Right. Now, I think past since then, there has been possession movies that have been wonderful. Uh, but this kind of started it. It did start it. Yeah. The lighting, the music, the whole pea soup. Pea soup? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I just thought it was hilarious. You know, this innocent girl ends up yeah, having a spinning reading. head and throwing up on priests. Spitting up pea soup on everybody? Yeah, it's just awesome. Um, the actress, the female actress that plays the mother, actually got physically injured and permanently damaged from this movie. Oh, that is that is a whole different video about <laughs> curses in movies. Right. You could go on another 20 minutes on the movie Poltergeist. Oh, and yeah. And the that. Oh, yeah. Good gosh. I was... Football poster and everything. Yeah, man. It's crazy. But this one, the scene that really got me as a kid when I first saw this... I mean, I've watched this multiple times, too, like Stigmata. Yeah. I, I can't get sick of this movie. Mm -hmm. But when she's taking the cross and shoving it inside her <laughs> and stuff, I'm like, what the hell is she doing? I watched it as a kid, like a little... Yeah. I might have been maybe eight first time I saw it. Yes, probably. Body of Christ, body of Christ. Fuck me, fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> and the the thing is, in that you're like, okay, does she love Jesus? <laughs> or does she is she mocking Jesus? I'm not sure which one it is. Uh, well, she definitely had Jesus inside her. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> And then that's where the whole, you know, understanding the whole slogan of the power of Christ compels you. Yeah. That's where that comes from. Yeah. You know, you haven't really ever heard that except for this movie. And, and I, I believe it was Dick Smith that did the special effects makeup for this. And the special effects for the time her were face really was, good. The way her face just her deteriorates. Face and, I mean, there's a reason why when they do those little jump scare videos on the internet, they use her face. Yeah. For the majority of them that I've seen. Especially for the time, that face was crazy. Her yeah. voice was creepy. Her voice, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was good. What would you think of the third one, which should have been part two in my opinion? Third one was good. A lot better than the second one. Yes. A lot better than the I, second one. I really one. think they should have went The Exorcist. What is the third one's name? I don't know. I cannot think of it off the top of my head. Well, it should have been the first one, the third one being the second, and then the one that goes into Regan and how she is, yeah. you know, as a separate storyline. Because it really felt disconnected. Yeah. The second one felt very disconnected from the first one. Um, that was the same way with me and Hellraiser. I actually thought the third one should have been the second one. Because the second one I didn't enjoy. Hellraiser. Yeah. So many good quotes are from that series. So many good quotes are from that series. Jesus. And Jesus wet. <laughs> <laughs> Number two. I uh, introduce this one to you. Yes. Um, it, it's. I saw it as a kid. It's one of my mom's favorite horror movies. My mom's the one that got me to watch this as a child. And it just stuck. To this day. I just it's just a movie I keep returning back to I don't get bored with it yeah. and it just stuck in my psyche and this is actually how I learned the seven deadly sins so when okay. I had to know them in church I, I just recalled it from the movie 
I mean, <laughs> which is a bad way to do that at a church. I'll talk about But the movie's seven. Seven. Uh, Morgan Freeman, Brad Pitt, and Gwyneth Paltrow. Gwyneth Paltrow. And then the unexpected villain, Kevin Spacey. Yeah, which is unexpected. Um, I watched that movie, I didn't even... You just told me Kevin Spacey's in it, and then I watch it, and I cannot believe that was Kevin Spacey. Yeah. I just... I guess I just got to hating him. You're a freaking serial killer, dude. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty well done. It's Kevin Spacey. Yeah. This movie reminded me of Silence of the Lambs. In the sense that the serial killer was just fucking with the police that were, you know, trying to figure out who he was. Yeah. Was in control the entire time. And just was so disconnected. Yeah. It was frightening. If you ever heard someone ever say, uh, if you think you are a step ahead of them, you were actually three steps behind them. That's pretty much the definition of this movie. Yeah. Like, this dude knew everything that was happening. And that's and that's why... And he could have killed the one detective at one point in time. Yeah. And when I was watching the commentary, the guy made a good point. He said, the intention was to say that he knew that the cop had a bad temper, so he had a use for him later. That's why he didn't kill him then. He knew that it set everything in motion, because he knew that the detective would go and break into his apartment after that, and that means he would have gotten off on anything they found. Yeah. So he needed all that to play out. I even think, uh, yeah, the way that he, that uh, Kevin Spacey's character, the way he holds himself, Everything yeah. is just like I envy Hannibal. You. Yeah, just like Hannibal Lecter. I envy Lecter. your life. <laughs> I envy your wife. You. I, I tried playing uh, husband and wife, and it <laughs> didn't work, so I took a memento. <laughs> a souvenir. Dude, that was a terrible souvenir. If you don't What's know what it box? is. What's in the box? What's in the box? You'll know what's in the box. What's in the fucking box? <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> someone get someone. Someone get someone. <laughs> no, someone call someone. Someone, someone call, call someone. someone. <laughs> Man. Oh, the ending. The ending's wonderful. And the, the murders. Yeah. The, the pound of flesh, making the guy eat, the envy. Yeah, the... Now, yeah. So he talked about seven deadly sins. Yeah. That's why it's called seven. Yeah. Uh, he kills people in the way of seven deadly sins. Yeah. And... One thing that I asked him before I actually watched this movie was, how does he do gluttony? And I found out. And, uh... It's fucked up, isn't it's it? It's messed up. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty messed up. Oh. <laughs> Sloth was really messed up, too. Yeah. And the way... That's the other thing i got to say that's brilliant about this movie, is how... They go from one murder to the next. The subtle clues they're at each murder to lead the person to the next one. Yeah. And how, like, when they go from... What one was it? So when they're going from the lawyer's house, who does the pound of flesh, mm -hmm. how they figure out who the next person is and how they kind of lead you to believe that that's who's been doing the killings the whole time. And then they get there. And you're like, holy fucked up. Like, you find out his whole story, like how he was... This really messed up guy that did all this messed up stuff. So you're, you know, you think he has to be the one that did it, mm -hmm. and he turns out to be sloth. And then, well, the thing is, I love, I love how. First of all, I don't know how they would have got this thought. Like, who? What kind of guy makes a movie about seven deadly sins in this yeah. way? And who would have ever thought to make a serial killer that kills people in seven deadly sins? Yeah. Now at the end. Um, not trying to give too much away, but I like how wrath is actually not brought out by the serial killer. It's really not. Now, the serial killer kind of pushes him to commit wrath. And he figured out that he was a very angry person yeah. by his interactions with him throughout the movie. Yeah, but I like how basically he plays with his emotions enough that the serial killer doesn't execute wrath. Yeah. Another and, person does. And if you watch it again, if you watch him in the police car... Mm -hmm. He's fucking with the detective the whole time, and then he gets this little smile because he knows that he can push his buttons. He's, like, proud of himself because he knows that he can, like, manipulate him, and it's he just up. falls through with it. <laughs> That's not nice. Seven. Great movie. Must watch. Now, my number one movie... 
I don't know how many people would put it in their number one slot. I would not. Um, <laughs> I have it as number one because it's one of the few movies... I, I have this curse where when I watch a movie, I can usually figure out what's going to happen before it happens. And then I just watch the movie just to see if I'm right. Yeah. And see how they unwind, you know, mm -hmm. un reveal the story, do the reveal. This movie, I did not guess what was going to happen. Until the very end when it was finally revealed, and I was like, are you shitting me? Yeah, if, if you watched this movie and you understood what was going to happen, like, let's say 20 minutes into this movie, you, de good. you deserve a PhD. Yeah, you're damn good. Like, this is a movie that... No. I'm... It makes me think that maybe even the director didn't even know <laughs> what he was wanting to have happen. <laughs> yeah, and he just decided, hey, you know, it'd be cool if we did this. <laughs> wow. And then at the end of the day, that was a good movie. Yeah. Cut. But I have the uh, Collector series. I have watched this movie numerous times, and each time I watch it, I still look for subtleties. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, with You Do a Sixth Sense, and like I did with Tell of Two Sisters, Uninvited, all of them. There's subtleties. There's things that give it away once you know. Fight Club. I still can't with this one. Yeah. They're just not... There's not that many... There's certain things that are giveaways, but it doesn't directly go, Hey, look, you, it was told you the entire time. Mm -hmm. You know, but... um the way she wakes up, I think, is the only thing that kind of reveals that something's not quite right. Because the very intro of this, she's screaming. She's screaming. When she at the top up. of her lungs. Yeah. And then you find out later why she was screaming at the top of her lungs. <clears throat> the but the movie movies. is The Others. Yeah. Um, with Nicole Kidman. Oh, man. Um, with, yeah, which is, I think, one of the best acting jobs made by Nicole Kidman. Yeah. Uh, she, she's such a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In this movie, she is. Like, her character is just she so... She is just such a smothering mother. Yes. That you can't help but hate her. She's got, like, a stick up her ass. Yeah. Now, with me, it's not <sighs> on my top ten. Maybe if I was to watch it more often, it would be on my top ten. But it's one of those movies that I loved it. I will watch it with other people, but I forget about it. I forget uh, about yeah. it over time. Like, I'm just, oh, yeah, the others. Even oh. though it, the twist will have your head spinning. Yeah. And and when the um, help makes the comment about the living in the dead, interacting, mm -hmm. we have to learn to get along with one another, I liked that perspective. Right. It's a damn good movie, though. Yeah, still watch it. Um, yeah. Now, my honorable mentionings. I, um, I don't really expect anyone to really know this movie. Uh, did you know of it when I mentioned it to you? No, I did not. It, it's made by the same director that did um, Brotherhood of the Wolf. Okay. This movie, I love the soundtrack. I bought the soundtrack because the, the theme song just haunted me. It, it stuck with me. Um, and throughout the movie, they play that song, and it just kind of gets under my skin. And yeah. It's called <laughs> House of Voices. Yeah. A lot of people bashed on this movie. Absolutely bashed on yeah, it. Yeah, I actually, after I watched it, I went online, looked at reviews of it. Uh, first of all, Rotten Tomatoes gave it a horrible, yeah, horrible rating. And, like, we're talking, it was like 2.5 out of the 5. Yeah, a lot of people like, attack the ending, because they don't get the ending. I I really think, again, it's it's you having to pay attention. Yeah. Now, there are movies that you don't have to pay too much attention. Like slasher movies, you don't have to pay attention to the whole Yeah, movie. you can go have a cigarette, come back, and you'll be able to figure out once a few seconds what oh, you just Oh, okay, missed. he's killing people. Yeah. I get it. But with movies like this, if you don't sit down and, like... And focus on it from yeah, beginning to end. Yeah, and watch this, then you will not understand. The ending, most especially because... What happens... Could easily confuse somebody. Yeah. Easily. Um, it's, it's not blatant. It's not like, here's what happened. Yeah. You're left to figure it out yourself. This movie, yeah. though, what did you think of the scene where she is down in the hospital area and there's all those little mud or whatever filled vats and yeah. she turns around and all those kids are sticking out of them? 
showing me the test tube babies are not a good idea. <laughs> no, like, that actually... I would have never guessed that would have happened yeah. at all. It frightened me. <laughs> it made me jump. I was like, what it the frightened fuck? me. But I, I didn't see... If this makes sense. I don't even know if this makes sense. I didn't see a need for it. But at the same time, I enjoyed that it was there. Yeah. But at the end of the movie, I was well, like, that was something that popped out in my head. My understanding is all those kids were victims of what happened. Okay. And that's why you saw all those toys and all those beds. And their attempt was to put them in these vats to try to help fix them from what happened to them. And they didn't survive. Mm. And so... Their spirits were locked in that realm, I guess you can say, that part of the house. Okay. And, like I said, there's a transition when they get on the dumb lift or whatever it's called. Because before that, all that shit was deteriorated. All that shit, you know, mm -hmm. was just withered with age. Yeah. Um, but then you get on that lift and you go to the bottom, everything looks like new. Like, nothing's been touched. And I, I really think that her spirit, her... Well, I can say spirit, although I'm giving some things away. Being in that area activated all their spirits. Okay. And the fact that she is a mother yeah. kind of helped trigger them, too, because they're all kids. That makes sense. And so, and that's why you see the scene where she gives birth, mm -hmm. and then at the very end, she's holding the baby with yeah. all the spirits. And so, they say, even though I'm giving the movie away, because I don't know how many people are going to actually go and watch this, um, that when she gets on that lift, it crashes and kills her. And she dies there? And she dies in the lift. And that's what? why it transitions into that beautiful, clean environment, because she's dead. She died. And that's why that girl wanted to go. Because she knew if she got on there, because there's a struggle between her and the other character, and she knew if she got on there, she would die. And then she'd be able to be with all of her friends. Because she's the only survivor. Okay, so I just got a big pounding headache from hearing <laughs> that. No way. That's what happens. Yeah. When she gets on the lift, it crashes and kills her. And the other girl knew that was going to happen. That's why she was fighting her to get on it. How about that? I did not know that. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to watch blown. that movie. <laughs> um, there we go. So, yeah, that's those are my uh, movies. Um... Not saying they are the best, yeah, but they are the ones that I like the most, and it was fucking hard to pick them. Yeah, I mean, out of all my collection, it was really hard to whittle it down just mm -hmm. to those. There's so many though that I wanted to put on this list, and I had to whittle it down to what ones stuck with me the longest, did I keep returning to to watch, and I could not figure them out when I first watched them. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's that makes up a good movie. If you keep wanting to watch a certain movie, then you could you could probably be assured that that's on your top ten. Yes. Uh, Carnival Souls, for sure. Carnival Souls, I, I do feel very confident about being yeah. on the list. The placement of it, maybe not so much, but it is definitively on the list. Seven, on the list. Mm -hmm. um, the others, on the list. I find seven to be perfect where it is. Yeah. I do. I... I was watching it yesterday for the first time. I'm in love with the movie. I think it's great. So I think, you know, what is it? First? Second. It second. was second. Yep. It was second. It's a great place. And the others <coughs> wouldn't be on my top ten. Yeah. Um, and the only reason I put it on my number one is literally I could not figure it out. Mm. I could not figure that movie out. And I, like, kept having ideas. That's and a movie of your lost the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I had that's to awesome. put it as number one, because with Seven, I like that they don't really show you much from the um, murderer side. Yeah. That they keep you guessing just as much as the detectives. Tale of Two Sisters could have easily been number three, but the reason why I didn't give it number three is because it does have some dry moments. Mm-hmm. It does have some flow issues, but the reveal is very unique. Mm -hmm. And how everything comes together is very unique. 
Yeah. So that's why I had to bounce it down a little bit. But yeah. There it is. There it is. That's the list. There's ten. Top ten horror movies from Jeremy Brotherton. Make sure you watch the second video. That's going to be my top ten. And probably... Probably honorable mentions. Because... I don't think I'm going to have a good time doing that. Might just make them all the top tens every Friday the 13th. And then honorable <laughs> mentions are like, alright, here's 28 days later. Yeah. Just honorable. There's like 15 honorable mentions. Yeah. yeah, hopefully. Hopefully. That's what I'm hoping. So. But. And as we get these going, we'll be able to do them quicker. Yeah. Well, so. we'll see you then. See you then.